Um, how can the wife foster leadership in men? Hmm. And how can the man foster leadership or the, 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 the man foster leadership in his wife? Leadership in his Sorry, wife. Sorry, submission in his wife. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to leadership, you don't sleep is wrong. <laughs> there I is there? more. It's Can flowing. I be there? <laughs> Hi everyone, you're welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Omaomi and this is Israel, my lovely husband. And today we'll be sharing with you some things that you need to know about leadership and submission in marriage before you get married. And even if you are married, this may be a very good one for you to listen to. You may have noticed that um, you've been seeing just me in our previous videos, but today my husband is here with me and it's because I have seen him practice leadership in such a very good way and he actually teaches leadership to teenagers and youth and I believe that you have like very you know good ideas to share with us in this video. Um, so we are actually three here, our daughter is here so you will be hearing some cooing and different noises. So um, you know many times when people talk about leadership and submission in the context of marriage. Some people think that it is a, um, like you're being called to a life of subjugation and then some men think that you're called to, you know, to enslave the next person or, and some, some people are not even thinking about that, but they are scared of that concept about how that, oh, I may not be able to fly once I get into marriage because I have to remain under somebody. So I want us to unpack that for it before mm -hmm. we talk about, you know, some particular points. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that um, leadership is, is a concept that cuts across every aspect of everyone's life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people would say personal leadership, self-leadership. People would say religious leadership in church. Mm. People would say, you know, family-based leadership. <coughs> and, and this is because um, leadership brings orderliness to things. Mm. Yeah, it brings orderliness, it brings structure. Mm. It brings organization to a particular thing. Mm, absolutely, yes. So he also talks about, um, I think while we're talking, I just remembered how that when we're talking about marriage, you must always look at it as a mirror to the relationship between Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so Christ is the head and the church is the body. And so the body does not suffer by being under Christ. The body, in fact, blossoms. The body gains direction. The body knows what to do. In fact, the body kind of gets healing by being under Christ, mm -hmm. literally, because we are followers of Jesus Christ. We, we enjoy certain privileges by being under his headship and leadership. And I believe mm -hmm. that that's how it's supposed to be in marriage as well. Mm -hmm. um, the wife enjoys certain privileges by being under her husband. And the husband mm -hmm. also enjoys certain privileges by ruling his wife in the leading way that... his wife. Leading. You know, a king rules. Oh, well. Yes. <laughs> So that's why, wait, that's why I said I want us to unpack that so that people are not thinking that rulership is a bad thing, bad thing yeah. or lead, leadership is a bad yeah. thing. Yeah, do you get Yeah, I, mm. I, I generally believe that it's, it's the context in it's which those context. things are exactly. used. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll stick to the one you said. What yeah, do you mean? Leadership, leadership, leading. leading you know. You know? So we're not use ruling, although mm -hmm. ruling may not be bad. I don't know. Yeah, like context. In the context. So, yeah, so let's stick to leadership. Yeah. So, um, so now that we've said that, the, the first thing that I... I you know, while I was thinking about this topic is that leadership and submission is not the absence of friendship. Mm. Romans 5 verse 10 says that our friendship with God was made possible because of the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so even while, you know, we were enemies with God, Christ died for us. And that's how our friendship with God was made possible. And everybody knows, even people who are not Christians know that god is our creator mm -hmm. is the one that you cannot compare you know yourself with god mm -hmm. and then the bible still calls us friends with god mm -hmm. how much more when you are getting married to a fellow human being mm -hmm. do you get mm -hmm. how much more when you're getting married to a fellow man so friendship can still be possible despite being led by somebody yeah do you get i also yes. still remember my time in corporate world even though we had bosses, our bosses still, you know, engaged with us as friends. They didn't yeah. try to, you know, demean us or treat us as less than human beings. So, yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> just just like you said, mm. um, the fact that you're a leader doesn't mean, in, in the context of marriage, doesn't mm. mean that you, you should totally become 
<laughs> you totally become the alpha and omega of the relationship. Mm. You know, leadership is an opportunity to build that atmosphere of friendship, mm. to build that environment where your spouse, your children can be free to interact with you and communicate with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my thoughts. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I feel that you know a man's leadership or even a woman's leadership in a assigned role mm -hmm. um, gives you know enhances friendship. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. When I do what I'm supposed to do and my spouse does what she's supposed to do yeah. in a marriage, we are able to you know bond. We're mm -hmm. able to actually respect ourselves as friends, and we're yeah. also able to understand ourselves. Yeah, I also feel like friendship actually makes makes some things possible that commanding will not make possible. You know, when you try to command somebody and make them feel like you don't have a say in this topic, it becomes hard to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. But when you come as we are partners, we can discuss this together. Your input is relevant in this marriage. Then. Mm, then you're able to achieve those goals easier than when you just push people to do things do you get mm -hmm. and like i said even in the corporate world you find it easier to work with friendly bosses than the ones that are just always bossing you around because yeah. you know that you are valuable in this team you're mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. do you get mm -hmm. and there are also times when you also realize that <clears throat> I think it's also it's a balance actually because you know there are times that because you now know that oh i am friends with this boss you now think that you cannot start doing how you want to do yeah, <laughs> you yeah. cannot be disrespectful so being friendly or the friendliness that your spouse shows towards you is not an avenue to disrespect them mm -hmm. or not to acknowledge that they are the leader in this marriage mm -hmm. you get so yeah. you must you know appreciate the friendship that is being extended towards you by mm -hmm. being um, reasonable in your response, being reasonable in how you treat them and all those things. Yeah. yeah. So people generally define leadership as the process of influencing other people. See, that's group. why I said she called. <laughs> <laughs> as the process of influencing a person or mm. a group of people. Mm. Um, you made mention of command. Um, if you want to build a friendship or if you want to build friendship in your mm. marriage, mm -hmm. you the leader has to be able to influence, you know, um, his or her spouses mm. yeah, like his spouse and you know the children mm. you know it's 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 a process it's it's something that you deliberately have to do mm -hmm. like you have to influence that friendship you mm. have to inspire the friendship within your family mm. yeah absolutely. so it's, it's not about bossing around yeah absolutely it's not about that because even christ does not boss us around mm -hmm. he treats us with so much gentleness i remember a part in the bible that talks about how that christ washes washes the bride and presents her to himself mm. like it's so mm. nice it reminds me of how for example okay i'm wearing a particular dress right now which mm -hmm. you guys cannot see mm -hmm. but how that you got me this dress and then you like that the dress is on me mm -hmm. Do you know that's how christ treats um, treats the church mm -hmm. he washes the church he cleans her mm -hmm. he makes her righteous because we are the righteousness of christ mm -hmm. of god in christ okay, jesus. jesus yes mm -hmm. so he makes us righteous and then presents us him to himself like he didn't know that he did he did all that mm -hmm. and so imagine if i'm the one claiming my beauty claiming my righteousness forgetting that it was someone that made me righteous mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot to say about this friendship thing yeah. but we must not forget that leadership and submission on marriage is not the absence of friendship yeah one other thing that i'd like to say also is that it takes being a good follower to be a good leader mm. and this is for the men and for the ladies it takes being a good follower of christ to be a good um submissive wife mm. do you get yeah mm. so so i <clears throat> i know that you meant that it takes being a follower of christ for men to yeah. be a good leader yeah did i say yeah. something else no no you, you just said follower like oh, okay, you know okay. i study followership too so yeah i said follower of christ <laughs> yeah to be a, a follower of christ so um the bible commands or maybe admonishes men to actually lead the home as christ leads the church so it means that as men as the leader in the home we are not an absolute mm. you know heroic uh, messiah of the home mm. we have you know we have the chains of command we are supposed to look unto god and from that looking unto god that inspiration that motivation we get from god that leadership that we get from god mm. you know we're supposed to use that same thing extend but that same it. yeah we're supposed to extend it to our wives or our spouses and our mm. children mm. yeah so so the the idea or the authority you have is a 
let's say it's a borrowed authority mm-hmm. delegated authority delegated authority that christ you know because don't let me just go into that but it's a delegated authority and so you must treat it with such a privilege to be able to lead your home so an encouraging thing about this is that um men who find it hard to lead or who find it confusing to lead at times can you know ask god to provide direction because they know that he's the ultimate leader of the home mm-hmm. he's the one that is in charge of the home especially if you have dedicated your home to god and so the back to this whole life of christianity is such a good life because you know that god is carrying you i always say this and i don't know why but you know that god is carrying you even as the man of the house god is carrying you and you can be a child to him so when leadership is hard even when being submissive is hard as well you can ask god to teach you and one reason why i also said that being a good you know follower of christ helps you to be a good submissive wife is that because while probably while you're single or even if you got to know god even as a married person Mm -hmm. if you have been learning to do what the holy spirit has been telling you to do Mm -hmm. you may not find it or you most likely will not find it hard to you know listen to your husband or to follow his leadership and you know there are times when we are in conflicting or we have conflicting opinions and even if i say israel this is what i think about this what I always say after that is that, but if you decide that we should do otherwise, mm-hmm. I am totally in support of you because I know that God is going to bless that decision. Having said that, I think I've established the fact that it helps following Christ or following the Holy Spirit's leading. It helps you to also follow your spouse. And then it helps you to not be so rigid on your own decision as a wife, knowing that um, your husband should have the final say. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah because you trust that even his final say, has considered you and has considered God mm-hmm. in the entirety of it. So you're in safe hands, like on one body. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> many people actually equate leadership for men mm. um, to main responsibility. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that's because, um, you know, when, when we talk about leadership in the marriage context, mm-hmm. we're not just talking about, oh, go and cook my food where is my food you know <laughs> um it's it means a whole lot number one it means you standing in gap mm. for your family um, making the right decision that would have a positive present and future implication mm. and number three you know making sure that you are in the right shape for your family and especially your spouse so um that those are the old component those are the components of you know of um leadership in marriage mm. now many of these things um in making the right decisions in making you know standing in gap for your family many of these things are beyond us as men and that is why we have god who is our ultimate leader mm. and we are followers of christ you know to lead us apostle paul said something follow me as i follow christ like, you know, he actually instructed his, his people then, his congregation then, <clears throat> that they should actually follow him as he follows Christ. Mm-hmm. So when a man stops following Christ, leadership becomes a, a thing of confusion for him. Mm-hmm. Yes, as mm-hmm. Christians, you know, as we desire to actually build a godly home, mm-hmm. one thing we need to know is that we have to be in the right shape in the right relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. And it is that relationship that extends to our spouse. In mm-hmm. fact, you know, people talk about leadership connected to love, connected to caring, mm-hmm. you know, in yeah. the public system. As opposed now, to yes, yeah. you would see that some of these elements of leadership like love, kindness, can be gotten only through the the fruit of the spirit. Mm. So if as a leader, I'm thinking of how I can be a a better husband to my spouse, a better friend, a better caring friend to my spouse, I need to know that it comes from the fruit of the spirit, Mm. which is also, you know, related to my relationship with God. Mm. So all of these things are very, very connected. Yeah, absolutely. What you just said about, you know, follow as I follow Christ, explains how that even this leadership and submission in marriage, is a limited context in the is a limited subject in the context of you are to follow your husband to the extent that he follows Christ. So mm-hmm. What I'm saying is this: your husband should not cause you to sin against God, mm-hmm. and then you cannot give that as an excuse for why you disobeyed God because 
on the judgment day, everybody will stand before Christ. It's yeah. not going to be your husband before you. Mm-hmm. So that is covering for you. You have to speak for yourself. Mm-hmm. And it just reminds me of the story of Ananias and um, Sapphira. Mm-hmm. How that even when the wife mm-hmm. came, she lied. But they did not say your husband has been punished, so you are free. She mm-hmm. was also punished for that decision that she made. Mm. And so it's important that even while you are courting, you can see traits that some this person will lead me not to, away from God or towards mm-hmm. God. So make your decision on that basis because in marriage, you don't want it to be hard to submit. You don't want it to be a confusing thing where your husband is leading you away from God. Yeah. Another thing was, um, another example in the Bible is... Um, is this, huh? Yeah, thank you where um these people came to tempt god and talked about this coin and paying taxes and all this thing. and jesus's response was give to caesar what resp- what belongs to him and give to god what belongs to god and so even in your marriage you must not forget that you have a duty unto god too your life doesn't just become unto your husband so there is a duty unto god and that always comes first before anything and i'm not talking about you know um um what do you call it? Um, activities i'm talking about your relationship with christ that's mm-hmm. the first duty and then duty onto your husband so understand that this relationship is very limited so you cannot use your spouse as an excuse for disobeying god yeah. you re- you have a duty onto god and yeah that's it basically i was going to say something else but yeah. Okay. So um so there there are two schools of thought in, in leadership where right? you, know, <laughs> you invited me. You're welcome, to, sir. To come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there are two schools of thought in, in, in um in leadership. Some people believe that leaders are born, mm. some others believe that leaders are made. Like um so those who believe that leaders are born means that oh um there are some people that have the innate ability to lead mm-hmm. from birth. You know, um, but then my focus is on you know leaders being made. Mm. Um, so the the conception of or the the conceptualization of um, leaders being made um, comes from the notion that leadership can be developed, leadership can be learned, Absolutely. leadership can be built over time with a combination of experiences, you know, mentorship and all of those things. Mm. So this is why I'm explaining this term. Mm-hmm. Um, when a man feels that he is in that position to lead, mm-hmm. um, it is important to know that you know leadership is a journey for us. Mm. So, um, how I would lead my wife in the first year of our relationship is entirely different from how I would lead my wife in the second year of our relationship, Absolutely. and it also depends on how I relate more with God. Mm. So, it's a journey. Leadership is a journey. It's it's not a destination. It's something that happens as a result of continuous improvement, improvement mm-hmm. in our relationship with God. In fact, improvement in our relationship with our spouses, mm-hmm. you know, being open to understanding our spouses. In fact, again, some people have also, you know, brought up new terms like shared leadership, mm-hmm. where it's not just the man who is making this, the decision. Now, looking at it from the concept of marriage, mm-hmm. your wife has access to God. Mm-hmm. I have my wife has access, access to God. I have access to God. Mm-hmm. God is able to speak with my wife. Um, God is able to speak with me. Mm-hmm. Now, shared leadership of course when I recognize the fact that my wife has some level of power and access to God. Mm-hmm. And before making decisions, I speak to my wife to understand or to share my thoughts and to know our worries mm-hmm. or our, or our opinion in 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 the regard of that decision making. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so all of these concepts, shared leadership, mm. um, continuous inf- improvement are things that actually foster the marriage, that fosters, that foster friendship, that Absolutely. foster good leadership in the home. Mm. When you find a man who understands his leadership role, mm-hmm. but is also open to constructive feedback from his spouse, mm-hmm. you have found a man that it's easy for him to actually move far. Mm-hmm. There are times that I want to make decisions mm-hmm. based on my own thinking, based mm-hmm. on what I desire. And I speak to my wife and she says, Israel, I don't think this has a good, you know, future impact, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that moment I know that, oh, okay. But now when I know that God speaks to me or God has spoken to me and I speak to my wife about it, we have a delegated authority yeah. and that is from God. There's no discussion and that's, around that. There's no discussion <laughs> around that. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah i also like times when god tells me to about something and i feel like ah, if i tell it to israel he may not really take it as much and then i like when you now come with that i'm like oh my god thank you lord like it's really it's easier when god is leading both of you because you have less contentions you have less things to and when i come to my husband and i tell him that god asked us to do this we don't discuss anything mm, around it like it's not a, it's not something to be if it's hard we say it is hard but we still do it do you get so it's not we have just have to acknowledge that god is the god is supreme mm. and i also like what you said about how that first year second year like that like that mm-hmm. it, it changes mm-hmm. and i can say that in the first year it probably wasn't so easy but as you keep practicing it's like a muscle that you mm-hmm. develop yeah so if you're just getting married in fact if you are still in a relationship and you're finding it hard to you know in your heart that this submission thing may be hard for me it is something you can pray about that mm. god should teach you to do it it yeah. is god teaches us he teaches us he teaches us part time he strengthens our muscles to obey him he strengthens our willingness to obey him mm-hmm. as we yield to him mm-hmm. do you get so if this, if this is currently hard for you acknowledge it and tell it to god tell it to your partner as well so they know and so it is something that you both can work together if you mm-hmm. listen to the last video we talked about how that you should share your weakness with your partner mm-hmm. and then you both can together work on it. yeah so i i really am enjoying actually this topic Mm -hmm. um, and that's because it's a very broad thing Mm. you you would notice that one of the causes of divorce one of the causes of conflict in marriage and relationship is because there you know many people have misunderstood the concept of leadership and um, submission Mm. um i want to propose that we have a part two Mm. yeah like you know um and this is the proposed topic like how can yeah, you know, am I writing a thesis or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how can the wife foster leadership in men? Mm. And how can the man foster leadership or the, 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 the man foster leadership in his wife? Leadership in his Sorry, wife. Sorry, submission in his wife. Yeah. How can the wife foster so, um, leadership in the man? Mm-hmm. And how can the wife foster, uh, the husband foster leadership in the wife? You just say leadership again Sorry, in the wife. So I, you know, I think I think about leadership all the time. How can the man? How can the wife? I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. So I think that it's, you know those yeah, two, it's two a good topics one. are very. It's a good one. Yeah, because you know marriage is about vulnerability. Like mm. if you're not vulnerable to your wife, who, who else would you? Do, yeah. And you know many people actually lack that leadership skill in marriage. Mm. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, and yeah. I think is what the last point I even said goes to the man. So if you think that it is hard for you to lead, talk to God, talk to your partner, yes. as well. find you know a mentor, find help. Yes. And then, like I said, it's a muscle you develop it it gets better and better yeah. and that's why sometimes you begin to see women who you know when their husband says something they don't even say any other thing because they wholeheartedly accept what he says even mm-hmm. though they may not agree with it and mm-hmm. then you feel like oh this woman is slow she doesn't know what she's mm-hmm. doing it's because mm-hmm. she has learned over time that god blesses order yeah. i know there are times when you've made or we've agreed to do things that i did not entirely want us to do and i've seen how god rewarded my obedience Mm. in that situation mm. and so you just in in that moment you know that it is not about you getting your way but yeah. about you obeying god yeah. because god blesses what he wants you to do but i'm mm-hmm. not what you want to happen or yeah. i don't know if you get what i'm saying yes yeah so i, I want to give two examples mm-hmm. um I, i'm not going to go into details so the first example is when we, we actually were trusting god for something we didn't have the money at the time but mm. you know i really wanted the thing my wife also wanted the thing we wanted it as a family then <laughs> then we wrote you know we, we we wrote um you know on our board or something like i think we wrote it on our board or a sheet of paper that yeah yeah we needed to get this thing by august last year and but you know one thing kept coming to our mind we knew that it wasn't something that we needed to save for it wasn't something that oh. we needed to yeah it wasn't something that we needed to post sure so. no it. please don't let us share it okay yeah it wasn't something that we needed to pursue. Okay. Then I spoke to a friend mm. who the Holy Spirit laid in my heart, like who the Holy Spirit actually spoke true to me. So um, my friend was sharing testimony of how he was trusting God for the same thing. Mm. And God instructed him not to buy it with his own money, not to get it with his own money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, um, 
But that was a message to us. Mm. We knew that, okay, this thing, we needed to trust God for it. Mm. And we trusted God for it. The trusting God took over a year. Mm. But God still showed that, you know, <laughs> like this was what he wanted. We wanted him to trust. He wanted us to trust him. And God gave us the what we wanted at the moment, at that yeah. time. Yeah. Do you understand? So another example was when, you know, we, we got to the leading. This one I can go into a little bit of detail. Mm. Um, God, we, we, we just knew, we didn't get any specific instruction. We just knew that about our baby, we shouldn't talk. Mm. You know, we shouldn't share details with people. We just knew. First of all, we got, we we're reading the Bible at different times and we read about Elizabeth, you know, how she went into hiding, why mm. she was. So we just knew. And um, so we sat down together. It was time for us to decide, okay, are we going to tell people or not? Mm. We decide, you know, that we're not going to tell people about, you know, we're details. not going to, yeah, we're not, we're not going to give details about the, yeah. about the childbirth. And that was a spiritual, spiritual thing. Mm. But why I'm sharing this story is because, you know, I want to show you that leadership is not just a one-sided thing in mm. marriage. Mm. Yeah, God, God uses the man to make critical decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then he speaks to the wife, he speaks to the man. And where leadership occurs is when the man understands that the wife has a voice. Mm. I'm, I'm not a feminist, but then <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the wife has a voice. The wife yeah. speaks to God. He has, she, in fact, she has more power. Mm. She has much more power when it comes to talking to God. Because, the, the, you know, women have... Women oh, have arguable. Well, women have many things they hold to God. Are God, this man. Men to have many things okay. they hold to God. That this <laughs> anyway, woman. Anyway, we're not having the yeah. argument of you know. Yeah. But what I'm just saying is that you know she has a voice. She, she has a power. She has access to God. So where leadership occurs is when you know the man recognizes the fact that my wife is also an instrument. That there are men that actually abuse leadership. They just mm. come home with loads of ah, loads of gifts, and they're like ah. You didn't tell me you're going to buy this thing today. You didn't tell me you would buy a chair. <laughs> you say, ah, I got salary and you know, <laughs> I bought I chair. No, no, no. When it comes to critical decision on what to spend money with, you have mm. to carry your spouses along. Mm. It's a difficult thing to do in marriage. Mm. Like, to say, ah, especially men, we don't like, ah, when our wives bring up the conversation, it's how much is in the account. Mm. We don't like it at all because we feel like, ah, you know, I can only take this risk now, yeah. you know, trust in God and all those things. So, yeah. you know. So it brings check and balance. Yes, yeah, yes. Nice. So I am advoc I am, I'm actually advocating for, you know, you know, not like understanding that leadership is both of us coming together okay. to build <laughs> a home. A Do you understand? Both of us coming together to build a home. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have my authority. I have my leadership responsibilities. But then it all boils it all boils down to let us come together mm -hmm. and magnify what God would have us do. Amen. Yeah, thank you. So this is actually a very, you know, beautiful thing to discuss and I like that it's practical. And like we said, it's a muscle, like you develop it, it's a skill, you develop it and it gets easier. Does it get easier? Well, God can help you through the journey. Yeah. Every day is, you know, there's always a decision to be made every day. And even if you fail, even if there are times that, oh, I did not submit and, you know, things have gone haywire, there's always an opportunity to, you know, rectify the problem that has been, you know, that has occurred. So um, I hope that you guys found this or you found this, um, you know, very uh, helpful. helpful and educating. And it's something that you look forward to. Like the, you talk, you proposed a topic. So, I mean, if yeah, we work towards it. And you also mentioned um, th that topic. I like the part of. How can the man foster leadership in For, the wife? Oh, not submission. No, 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 and submission too. But mm. I feel like some women too feel like that that submission position is a very dormant thing. And I kind of we've kind of addressed it how that is not dormant. You have something to say. Mm -hmm. You have to bring solution. But how can you foster that mm. in your wife? Probably like you know. I know there are many times you've told me to handle things like you don't want yeah, to be discussing like... some particular things. <sighs> yeah. So that's one way to foster it to let yeah. her know that you are also a leader in this home you accept that 
when it comes to the whole mentality um the head yeah. but you're also a leader in some areas yeah. you get yeah so we can also discuss that but mm. that's if you decide See, to honor our no, invitation no, it, it wasn't again. my fault like I, I, think, that is I think ah! no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, I think I think that you know, like from now to maybe June, I, I would I'll be shooting with you. Oh, so now, you. outside the context of myself and normal with me, like an example of you know leadership being done mm -hmm. from a man was when God spoke to Abraham, and mm. God said to Abraham, you know, leave your father and mother unto the land I will show you. Mm. When Abraham left, he left with all his family and servants. That mm. was a man under delegated authority okay. like leadership who mm. embraced leadership it was uncertain of the journey mm. when god speaks to you as a man you may be uncertain but one thing you are very sure of is that he's speaking to you yeah and, and that's the you. best form of leadership mm. supreme spiritual leadership absolutely yeah thank you so much Thank you. Uh, if, if, like, I, I don't want to bust into you. Yeah. I, I don't want to go. Ah, come on, this bear. Come on, this bear. It's not the leadership. It's not sleep. It's real. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you in our next video. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.